you guys my name is Brittany and welcome back to my youtube channel you guys in today's video we are going to be talking about dual enrollment and how i am preparing my middle schooler for beginning dual enrollment in her 10th grade year so you guys hi i'm Brittany. if any of you guys are new here i'm a homeschooling mom to three and i am in my fourth year of homeschool and i'm going to be starting my fifth year of homeschool really really soon uh before i start today's video i want to give a few huge disclaimers <laughs> first and foremost i have never taught or graduated a kiddo from my homeschool yet so i am just speaking here in today's video about the goals and the plans that i have for uh, my oldest daughter in particular in preparing her for dual enrollment. I wanna let you guys know that I wholeheartedly believe that dual enrollment may not be the path for every child. However, for this particular kiddo, her desires and what she wants for her future, this is the path that I believe it's going to be best for her. I'm not too sure about my other kiddos rising up behind her, if this will be a path for them as well. I will evaluate that when it comes to the time. But for right now, I am going to be prepping my oldest daughter for dual enrollment. So um, I went ahead and I set some, uh, I guess, personal goals in place in order for me to prep them. And you guys wanted me to share them with you in today's video, especially after you guys seen my uh, sixth graders day in the life. And I was speaking a little bit about college prep. You did want to hear more about it in a specific video. So a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about as far as preparing my daughter for dual enrollment is specific to my state. So I definitely will say, make sure you do research in your own state. I live in a state of Georgia and uh, the requirements for dual enrollment may be a little bit different in your state. So make sure you definitely check, check out your state's uh, Department of Education's website because it is filled with abundance of knowledge and prepping uh, your kids for dual enrollment if that is the path you choose to take with your kids. So for the state of Georgia, it's a website. I'm going to link it down below. It's called georgiafutures.org. And it literally maps out everything as far as dual enrollment, the requirements, college prep. It has everything in it as far as the Hope and Zell Miller scholarships. Those are free scholarships uh, that are offered to students here in the state of Georgia based on grades or merits. Now, as far as homeschoolers, we can't get or they don't give our kids the scholarship based off of grades we actually have to create a portfolio and sharing and submitting all of the work that they did. And based off of that is how they would receive those same scholarships and state funding uh, in the state of Georgia, which is amazing. So uh, that website, it literally is just a wealth of knowledge. I really gained a lot of my research and things from that and also from the Georgia Department of um, Home Education website as well are the two websites that I use primarily for all of my research when it comes to like the goals that I'm setting for my middle schooler. So I definitely will say do your own research. If you are a Georgia mama, I will leave those links down below for you. So the first thing that I know I have to do in prepping my uh, daughter for dual enrollment is she's going to have to take the SAT or the ACT uh, as a requirement for her to be registered to begin dual enrollment. And because I want her to begin dual enrollment in the 10th grade, I know by the end of her ninth grade year, she has to have at least taken the uh, SAT or the ACT at least once or twice. I'm planning for her to take it at least twice so she can get take the best of whichever test scores when it comes to that. So because I know I want her to take that test, um, at the end of her ninth grade year or summer of ninth grade year, I am going into seventh grade year. I have three years right now to prep her for that test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin starting some type of PSAT, SAT prep here in our homeschool uh, to begin to uh, get her prepared for that standardized test that she is going to have to take. So ways that I'm going to be doing um, SAT prep and small ways I'm going to be doing it is right now uh, I have been using IXL. They have a specific uh, portion for test prepping and they have it for PSAT and SAT prep where she can go on for about 10-15 minutes a day, do a few practice questions uh, to get her uh, more familiarized with the type of questions that they will be asking her. And that's something simple we will begin doing more consistently in her seventh grade year when it comes to test prep. Another website that has 
SAT and ACT prep is Khan Academy and it's completely free uh, where the kids are able to go in on and do different mock tests and things like that as far as prepping for this standardized test at home. Um, I will I do want her to be able to do like some type of in-person and or actual course when it comes to the um, SAT prep because I definitely know getting tips and tricks to take tests is really needed especially if you're not a good test taker and i really believe i would have benefited from taking more so of an actual test prep class growing up like when i was going through like the sat and act uh i believe if i did a preparatory course i wouldn't have had to take it so many times because i'm really not a good standardized test taker um so i definitely want to ensure she's able to take some type of course and she'll probably take that course in the ninth grade is what I'm looking towards. Maybe the end of eighth or ninth grade. It's kind of like the timeline I'm looking for to take like some type of actual course. I'm still doing research on it, so I'm not too sure where I'm gonna go or what route I'm going to take. Uh, in the state of Georgia, um, we have access to um, our homeschoolers being able to take the PSATs actually in the public school. We just have to make sure we call and it's a spot for them to take it here in the state of Georgia. And we do have access to some of these uh, preparatory classes as well um, as I am doing more research. So that's an awesome thing. So yes. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do in middle school now is, again, like I said it to, at the beginning, is I am going to set some realistic goals for my um, middle schooler to begin taking high school credits in middle school. She's definitely ready. She's self-motivated. She's independent. And she's very driven. So I definitely know she's going. To, she has all of the skills to be able to begin taking high school courses. In the state of Georgia, uh, we cannot begin giving high school credits until the eighth grade. So I know in the eighth grade, grade I'm either going to do three to four high school credits for her we're only able to give high school credits in math electives or sciences are the only categories we're able to give high school credits in in the eighth grade so those are going to be kind of like the categories I'm looking into giving her high school credits for right now she actually is already doing um, pre-algebra so I definitely know one of her credits is definitely going to be um, algebra one in the eighth grade now, uh, the last thing that I'm going to do as far as preparing her for dual enrollment and for her to be receiving uh, funding as far as like hope scholarships and things like that when she graduates our homeschool is I'm going to begin now uh, working on her portfolio, uh, beginning really collecting like things as far as her passion projects. Um, my uh, oldest daughter, she wants to do something in writing. And what I have been doing is, is I have been collecting and curating all of her her, like short stories and things she has written and I have been putting it together in one uh, folder uh, so as she is getting better and better with her writing I have um, I guess pieces to be able to share as like something as far as like her passion which is that right now I do want to begin doing more volunteer work um, our library actually offers um, volunteer work for the kiddos and I definitely think that that would be a good place since she loves writing and reading for her to have like some type of volunteer hours for so I definitely want to find more opportunities for volunteering as well in middle school now the particular steps that I am taking in middle school uh, now that I know like my overall overreaching goal is number one I definitely want to work on um, my oldest daughter's reading comprehension I want to make sure she has a high reading comprehension level to prepare her for those high level things she's going to be or high level books and uh, reading she is going to be doing in high school as far as her college courses she's going to be taking early I want to make sure she's able to read and discern and uh, have a good understanding when it comes to more difficult um, literature and things like that. So uh, I definitely want to make sure in her middle school years we're reading more challenging literature. We're doing like um, literary analysis and things like that. And she's also uh, being tested as far as like her reading comprehension. So when it came to my curricular choices for my middle schooler, I definitely made sure this year um, that or actually all of her middle school years that I wanted to make sure we were doing a literature based English. Um, so I wanted to make sure she was going to be reading like those higher levels of literature. She was going to be doing that like literary analysis. She was going to be really dissecting the books. I wanted to make sure she was going to have uh, that already in her curricula. We are using um, Oak Meadows curriculum 
album and it has the literature component combined and they use some type of they always use some type of classical or modern literature within their course and some of the literature you guys is really really challenging it really stretches her especially this year it definitely has stretched her as far as the literature and I'm so happy uh, that I chose uh, that in particular for her um, other good literature based programs especially for middle schoolers is uh, lightning literature moving beyond the page and of course sunlight and bookshark are uh, well-known literature-based curriculums that's really going to allow your kids to read that more challenging literature work on those higher comprehension and critical thinking skills um I have a pile right here of some of like the classical literature that my daughter has read or will be reading soon and these books right here definitely stretched her um last year we read the witch of blackbird pond and this book stretched her the high vocabulary and I was so happy we read this then um so we also did a literature guide with this from Rachel from seven and all with it as well but the literature itself it stretched her and I loved it another one is bronze and sunflower um Right now, she's reading The Adventures of Robin Hood. And again, uh, the Jarden in this uh, book is stretching her. And I love that. She has already read The Bronze Bow and The Golden Bull. And these are other like classical literature that has really um, got her thinking. The vocabulary is high in it. And I really appreciate her reading more of these like uh, literature pieces that is going to stretch her reading comprehension and her thinking. So that's definitely was something important for me in her middle school years. Now, as far as math, I definitely wanted to make sure she had a good math foundation these middle school years and prepping her for dual enrollment. Um, I just want, and for her SAT, ACT, I definitely know she had to have a good math foundation. Um, I really feel like in the past, I was all over the place when it came to math and math curricula, but um, I really honed in last year and uh, buckled down. The two primarily uh, math curriculas we have used the most consistently in our homeschool has been Saxon and math you see and I definitely will say those are some strong math uh, curriculas because every single time I give her her end of the year testing she always scores very very high in the math uh, portions and I definitely know it's attributed to it now uh, Saxon and math you see aren't the only great uh, math programs math homeschooling math curriculums out there I mean there's BJU Singapore um, there's a lot of great um, homeschooling math curriculums for middle school in particular that will prepare the kids for high school level math these are just the two that I'm most familiar with. Um, so I definitely wanted to make sure, like I said before, that I was consistent in math. I wasn't jumping, hopping around. She was able to get a good foundation to really prepare her for pre-algebra since I knew I wanted her to be taking her first algebra one course in the eighth grade. And I'm, I'm happy I stuck with that goal and you know we are on track for that one. As far as vocabulary, vocabulary has definitely been a skill that my, um, my daughter has been weaker in, but I definitely have honed in on vocabulary this school year for her. Vocabulary is actually going to be important again for reading higher literature, uh, reading comprehension, and also for the SAT, ACT prep. So um, some components and things that I have used this year that has helped her vocabulary skyrocket has been uh, vocabulary cartoons, and this is the SAT Power Words. I think it's more than one volume. These are really, really cute cartoons that helps the kids remember the vocabulary word that remembers the part of speech uh, this is done all orally my daughter does like using her vocabulary notebook with it but you don't need to use any type of notebook this is something you can pick up uh, five ten minutes a day and the kids is learning new vocabulary word and this has been an invaluable resource in my homeschool now, as far as like her main vocabulary curriculum, we have been using word roots. We just started this off this semester. She would not have been prepared to do this curriculum at the beginning of her sixth grade year. So I'm so happy I held off and I waited to start this. Now, word roots does focus on like Greek and Latin root words. Uh, so because they're focusing on the prefix, the suffix and the root, because they know the meanings of those, they're able to take words that they may not be familiar with and find, figure out the meaning of it, which is going to be a, a great skill for her, especially as as far as like test taking. So she's doing word roots. We started this in January. I'm so happy I waited because now she's doing really, really well. It is challenging her, but it's great. So these are my two resources that I'm using right now to strengthen those vocabulary skills for her. And a lot of you guys asked me, how did I know vocabulary was a weak skill for her? The only reason why I knew was because I do, I am required to do standardized testing in the state of Georgia. And the results showed that she was a little bit weaker 
in her, her vocabulary, whereas other areas like reading comprehension, math, and things like that, her scores was like skyrocketed. So um, that was the only way I was able to know and pinpoint that area that she needed more help on. So uh, yeah, as far as reading comprehension right now, I am still using Reading Detective. Um, I believe as we get further in her curricula, I don't think I will continue to use Reading Detective as far as like, um, I guess reading comprehension checks because she's reading higher levels of literature and doing literary analysis. I'm able to see her reading comprehension and how she's comprehending the text in that way. So this is probably going to be the last level of reading detective I use in middle school for her. But this is a great uh, resource as far as reading comprehension. I love the critical thinking company because in these these um, I guess reading passages, they're using classical literature uh, in helping the kids do that inferencing skill. And when my daughter first started using this workbook in the fifth grade, because this is the fifth slash sixth grade level, she did not like it. She didn't like the inferencing. She didn't like the way it made her think. But now she's really, really fluid. She understands what they're asking for and the questions. And it's been a great resource in our homeschool we have used as far as like that uh, reading comprehension. Now, as far as another skill, I definitely know I wanted to make sure she had before preparing her for dual enrollment was I wanted her to be a confident uh, writer. I know because she's going to be taking college courses, she's going to have to write. So uh, we have primarily used in our homeschool IEW. She completed IEW Structure and Style Level 1A uh, in her fifth grade year. And right now we are working in 1B. Um, I didn't do the 2A because I wanted her to have the um, higher reading comprehension source text in the middle school level. So that's the only reason why I uh, chose to do 1B instead of doing 2A instead. So uh, that is the curriculum she has been using for writing to help strengthen her writing skills. There is, again, like I said, a lot of great writing curricula and resources out there. EIW, Writing and Rhetoric, Write Shop. Um, it's a lot of great um, writing uh, courses you can take for your kids to help them be confident writers, especially if they're going to be taking college courses a little bit sooner in high school. So I definitely want to make sure uh, she was going to be fluid in her writing and writing research papers or whatever her, her professor was going to give her in her courses, she would be able to do it fluidly and confidently. So uh, working on those writing skills and really mastering them in middle school was really and is really a top priority for me here in my homeschool. Some other things I definitely am working on, and this is just like personal stuff, is critical thinking skills. Uh, we are going to start the fallacy detective, uh, which is going to help with those reasoning and critical thinking skills. I definitely want um, my uh, oldest daughter to be able to critically think, especially when she's giving different, inf when they're giving her information in the these college courses I want her to have that reasoning skill and to think on her own so that's really really important for me and I definitely want to stretch her muscles when it comes to that um, we are working on note-taking and study skills as well in her middle school years I don't have any particular um, like a uh, resource that I'm using uh, right now. I'm just going off of my knowledge that I have helping her uh, make little anchor charts and uh, fun diagrams in her uh, notebooking, especially when it comes to science and history. Those are ways I am challenging her as far as note taking skills. She's doing really, really well in science taking notes and she really, really is enjoying this notebooking style that I'm teaching her. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like what we're doing. As far as um, other things, I want to continue to challenge her to to ask questions, to speak confidently, to advocate for herself, especially because I may not be there all the time for her when she's taking these dual enrollment classes. I want her to be confident and know uh, she's capable to, um, I guess, advocate and speak for herself and, and be confident to ask questions and not, not know something and think it's okay. It's better and just teaching her like those little skills um, when it comes to her preparing to be more independent. So these are just a few things that I'm doing right now in middle school to prep my daughter for dual enrollment. And I'm really excited for her. Um, I'm excited too, because in the state of Georgia, dual enrollment is completely free. They uh, give us up to 16 um, credit hours per semester for dual enrollment. And it's going to be such a financial blessing for me and my home to be able to allow my daughter to get some of these college courses out the way, especially since this is the path she wants to take um, in you know her career and in her life so I'm happy to be able to gift her this opportunity 
for dual enrollment here in our home school. So you guys, this is everything. These are some of the tips and things that I'm gonna be doing. If you guys have any advice or tips, you already have done dual enrollment in your home school for your kids, leave it down in the comment section below. Help us out here, especially for the newbies like me that is, you know, uh, going up this uphill battle when it comes to, or this uphill journey, I should say, when it comes to homeschooling high school. So you guys, as always, thank you so much for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.